Welcome, Spartans, to Halo TV Plus, part of Evolved, your home for Halo. I'm your host, Oren, and on Halo TV Plus, my guests and I recap Halo's original TV show, Halo the Series, and we discuss its contents and unique canon within the Silver Timeline. Joining me tonight for Episode 9, the season finale, Transcendence, is Colin Perkins. Welcome to the show. We made it. We did it, guys. Oh my gosh, this is so surreal. It is. It's 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 exciting and sad at the same time. Halo has one season under the under their belt. Under their belt in the can. It's on streaming all nine episodes in it's the sheets, everything in the sheets and everything. Yes, indeed. Well, as uh, our listeners know, and if you're joining us for the first time, Halo TV Plus publishes a commentary podcast episode and an analysis podcast episode to accompany the Halo the series episode of the week. This is a commentary episode where in a moment, Colin and I will watch Transcendence and discuss the events as they unfold on screen. We encourage you to watch along with us. If you haven't watched the episode yet, we recommend that you watch it before listening to us as we will spoil scenes kind of before they happen, sometimes while they happen, and we think it's just a better experience to take it in and then come back and listen to us. If you are sticking around, take a moment to queue up the episode while I run through some housekeeping. If you're new to the show, welcome. Halo TV Plus is part of Evolved that hosts a variety of other Halo shows like Podcast Evolved, Mission Debrief, shout out to Colin, who's a host over there. Hey, yep. Builds with Blocks, also a host, and Halo Book Club and Halo Headlines. Evolved also partners with the podcast HCS Pro Talk. Josh and Will discuss the latest information within the competitive Halo scene with an emphasis on community every week. You can learn more about each of those shows on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. And as Halo TV Plus is a relatively new show, I ask that you rate it and leave us a review. I greatly appreciate all the feedback and suggestions from you, the listener, to improve the quality of our show. And now that we have reached the end of the TV show, I'm also looking for feedback about how to continue Halo TV Plus. So please, Give us your feedback. I would like to take a moment to thank all of our patrons for their continued support. Your contributions allow us to continue making new content like this every single week. So thank you all so, so much. Hell yeah. If you're not subscribed, our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, access to our podcasting soundtrack, and more. You can head over to patreon.com slash Halo Evolved to learn more. All right, Colin, before we dive in, here's our episode details for number nine, Transcendence. The synopsis is beaten, battered, and betrayed. John 117 leads the Spartans on a suicide mission to find the Halo and save humanity. Man, you can't you can't get any all stakes, you know, than that. <laughs> <laughs> that is intense. Um, I, I just want to say something real quick before I start. This episode, I had, it tweaked me out for some reason uh, the first time I watched it. I've been good the entire season about like, okay, this is a different timeline. I get it. They're doing a different thing. That's all, that's all good. At the end of this episode, I was just like, I didn't know what to think. I was like, what? Uh, uh, uh. I think, I think part of it was there are some plot conveniences, which we'll talk about throughout um, that, that those trip me up. And then there are the differences in the lore. That will probably that that also trip me up. So, I will try to keep my comments during this episode to just the plot, the weird plot convenience stuff, and then I'll talk about my concerns or issues or thoughts on the the lore variances during the analysis episode. And if you want to touch on some of that, you can. Don't be afraid to. But but yeah, the the part of the analysis is is to give that extra time to talk about these things, like. If 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 you our listeners were around for last week, I mean Josh and I really had a lot to say about one scene in particular. But don't don't feel like it's off limits. But but yes, we do have that other episode to to allow ourselves that additional time. Last few things I will say is that the director is Jonathan uh, Livesman. This is the fourth episode that he's directed. The runtime is 48 minutes and 19 seconds, and it premiered, or, or the original air date was May 19th, 2022. So with that, are you ready to begin, Colin? My finger is ready. All right, I'm going to count us down from five, and we will all plus play when I say play. Five, four, three, 
two, one, play. All right, so Colin, since you were not here last week, what did you think of last week's episode, Allegiance? Well, there's some heavy petting involved, I think. That was a little weird, but I was okay with it, I guess, maybe at the end of the day. Um, I, I think you touched on it during your analysis episode was like the intimacy thing was... It didn't need to go that far, but they like it made sense that they had some sort of an intimate moment. But they did what they did. I think um, the Halsey stuff was interesting, where she's really trying to like grab at straws at this point, right? She's trying to. She's really trying to take things in in her own hands. Yeah, exactly. And she's like, at the end of the day, she's kind of a contractor, right? Like, she wor- does she work for the UNSC? I don't know if in this universe or not. She's like part of the UNSC, but she's a scientist. Well, she's always just been a consultant. But she's not like a military person. No, she's she's just like a science consultant that is otherwise a civilian. But I really liked the end of the episode with the brawl because that brought me back, and I don't know if they did this intentionally, to... John um, in the McCore canon when he fought the ODSTs in the weight room. Like, I felt like that was a callback to that. Yep, I had the same sort of thought, so I think think you're on to something. So that was rad. Well, speaking of that, we kind of pick up this episode right when that happens, like right at the end of that. And, and episode 8 and episode 9 really are like a part 1 and a part 2 type of a thing. And I, I, I like that on, on some levels and then others. Um, it felt a little incomplete when episode eight just kind of ended. Yeah. There are a good amount of, you know, story to be told. And, and a longer story sometimes is, is a little bit more entertaining. And, and maybe on a rewatch, kind of watching everything all the way through is uh, maybe more rewarding since uh, you won't have those breaks between weeks like we had. Did one episode get cut at some point? Like, I feel like maybe we can talk about that at the end, too. There was. Um, originally, there was supposed to be 10 episodes, and for whatever reason, that 10th episode was cut. Mm, I feel like maybe that, that extra breathing room could have helped. I feel like it could have helped in some areas, but at the same time, I'm I, I'm kind of okay with it not being there. Like, I feel like there are some things that they kind of linger in, in this season that could have been, you know, not held so long but we can kind of get into that when we do our season season recap so john's just wandering around he's like dazed i feel there's the guy that did get fried yeah that was that poor guy yeah i feel like i needed a wide shot so they they hint at this giant destruction from this giant oh man there she she stole it (laughs) she just packed it into a box and then she shot a guy they managed just to just disarm this guy. Yeah, see, this 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 part hurt me. I was like, wait a minute, this military guy just puts his gun on the ground and then he just escorts her to the <laughs> to the Phantom. I would have been all right with with like them just going there and she just already being there. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you really needed to explain how did she know it was there, but maybe you know you could have. The artifact could have told her for all we know, you know, like, I don't, I, but whatever. I also found it weird that John was just wandering around the circles, apparently, and then he finds himself right back where he started. Yeah, that is, that is true. This, this is where it kind of all began, this, uh, all these action sequences. Uh, I feel bad talking over this, but this is like a, this is a powerful moment here, right? This is a really good scene. Yeah. I mean, I th- I think it's just I feel like we we honestly needed more of like the Spartans just kind of conversating and it just kind of all builds to this. I don't know, it's it's really good. I think th- I think this is the one of the few moments we really get keys kind of shining and I I I hoped that there was going to be more moments like this or just scenes where he's just a little bit more in control because i feel like he kind of cowers a little bit throughout the season early on yeah he shines here at the end i feel like he's a really respectable man in this scene and kind of this episode i totally agree i feel like they could go they could kind of bring him back to where he 
is in the mainline canon or was. Yeah. Here's the other thing that the audience, and I'm curious what an audience that isn't familiar with Halo thinks about this, the whole like the Halo is going to win us the war. Like, I don't feel like that was earned throughout the season. It was assumed, but there's no way for the audience to really know. They just kind of say the Halo's going to win us the war. We got to find it, but why? Right. Well, they, Reth has said it's a weapon, which you know you take his word with however much you want to. John seems to take his his word with it a little bit more often, or a little bit more strictly, I guess. But even still, like you have McKee talking about how it's gonna, you know, cleanse everybody who's not worthy to go on the great journey and do all these things, and so I, I feel like if it's almost like you know this is what our enemy wants, like if we can control it, even if we don't use it, like it it hinders our enemy, and so I kind of think that is part of the angle that that at least John and and like the way he's kind of selling it to everybody as why it's worth fighting for. So her her getting ordered off, this is great, like, she was ordered off the planet, she gets a ship, and then she tries to steal everything on her way out. She's like, oh yeah, I can have the artifact and my Spartans, right? That's She's fine. like very <laughs> stubborn too, and like, like I, I really like um, Aiden here, where it's like, he's like telling her, like, we have to leave, dude, and then she's like, no, not yet, like... <laughs> It's like everyone's outside about to like shoot you down. Yeah. There is there goes McKee. There goes McKee. Did all of the anti air guns where the pelicans like she just there's things flying in the air out there. Can none of them t- shoot her down? That that little part. I knew that was going to happen, but I was just like, oh, she should not have escaped that easily. I mean, there could be, I mean, again, I don't think there's a dial. I mean, I'm listening with the not listening, but I'm watching with the subtitles. And, like, all they need to do is add in a line where they said that, like, oh, our, our AA, like, turrets and stuff are still offline from the EMP blast. Exactly. Like, they needed to, like, step back and say, within a hundred mile radius, everything's down or something like that. Yeah. Or, like, our, our guns our guns are still rebooting. Right, right. This is very good. Yeah, this is this was a great Kai moment. Like this whole sequence, like the and we kind of talked over it, but her running up and jumping on the ship, like super Spartan like, and then what's my name, bitch? Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> gosh. And then like he, he and then a- Aiden gets in the way. Like I, I wasn't expecting that, but like I I like it. Like it's just it was brutal. These, these Spartans have good and bad sides to them, and like they definitely have issues kind of controlling that well it's it shows you the the power of that that pellet right like she's still struggling with her how to deal with her emotions um and it's only been and she gets whacked in the head because her helmet's off but (laughs) stop taking your helmet off but she needed to show her face to like show the emotion which i get oh aiden's like "Uh uh-oh you done fucked up buddy (laughs) oof our first casualty this episode. Or not our first, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's right. The fried guy. Fried guy's first. Fried military policeman. Ooh, what's, what is she on? Ooh, what is there? So there's also a great line that foreshadows the end of the episode where Aiden does say that something is like the package or something is like in the pod. And I... Did you, I mean, we'll get to it when we get to it, but like, were you expecting any of that or or were you? No, they got me. It got, it got me too. Yeah. I think they did a really good job with that. Oh, there goes his floppy body on the floor. Yep. I was like, I guess they're really. I was feeling this the first, first watch through. Like, I was like, you can't kill her. You can't, you know, like. I was going to be kind of disappointed if they did. And I was like, there's a shot that we're about to cut to where it's like the three Spartans and you see her ship right that's coming up right here. I was like, damn, they're fucking going to do it. And that explosion, I was like, Ugh. the silver timeline. And I was like, but Spartans can survive this. Like, 
don't just do it to do it, but like I could see it if the angle that they wanted to play was like, well, now there's you know it means more to to stop McKee and find the ring because now we're doing it for, you know, the Spartan that we lost. But then I was like, hell yeah, she's she's still she there. had too Plus, much character like, development. Kate Kennedy is just so good. Yeah, she's she's amazing. Like she's getting a huge fan following. I feel like her her like the, uh, the death of Riz or Vanek wouldn't have been as impactful. Like I feel like the the character to kill is Kate or sorry Kai. You know, so like I I, I can see it, but this is great though. Be, they kept her, and like now we can just continue to strengthen Silver Team for you know the rest of this episode, but also for like season two and stuff. So. I mean, it, Halo does like to kill its characters, so that could have that could have. And I didn't think about that, but that could have been the one, and people would have been just gutted if if she died there. It would it would have been like like a lot of the decisions on this show. It would have been controversial because like I would probably would have been upset, but like I would have been upset because like but like I good liked upset, her. right? Like oh, I can't believe they did that. I I agree though that like she, I feel like there is definitely more story uh, to be told with her but also just like the spartans as a team because like something that i wish i th- I already said this but like i wish the four of them operated as a fire team a little bit more than than what we got because because the moments that we do get with them like in this episode and and in other parts like they're really good and that's that's the kind of i don't know i just want to see more of that so josh's rant on the intro was hilarious by the way wasn't it great like <laughs> I feel like it's so I feel like the the intro to the next one will be different. I think you guys talked about maybe the ring, but here they're trying to establish everything around John. So I think it makes sense tonally that like, OK, all the story is like it's a surrounding John. So we're building up, you know, who he is as this Spartan. So I'm I'm OK with it. <laughs> Josh just hates it. Though. I mean, to each their own. I mean, like David, if you listen to him, like he just hates the music, and so like he doesn't like the intro. I I'm a little indifferent. I mean, it could be better, sure, but it's it's an intro. Like I'm not gonna. I would rather I would so much rather talk about the episode than the intro. Josh is Josh is a character, so I like this good. this question from uh, Perinkowski. She's like, well, how could you trust her? You know, because John's now like figuring everything out, like. She she was truthful with me, so I like the like the questions that she's asking are the questions I'm asking as a viewer, which I think is good. But I also agree with John that it's like, I there there definitely was a moment to where McKee, like almost wanted to step aside from the covenant and kind of just follow John because they shared this their their connection that we talk about that they're both you know reclaimers and blessed ones. But when she told him that, that was like the, their first interaction. So she could have been filling him full of shit at that point. It is true. It was it was kind of earlier on. I like the science stuff. So I would like to I would like to hear like Ian's thoughts. Ian Francis, like, is this good science or is this just sound like good science? <laughs> <laughs> Sci-fi science. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and like this was kind of not this science, but like earlier in the season when they were talking about oh we can't find anything it it, it gave me flashbacks to star wars when what was his name kenobi not kenobi Obi- oh uh, obi-wan Oregon? kenobi couldn't couldn't find kamino and it's and it's because they erased the planet from the records or whatever and it's like oh well clearly it's a covenant holy world that you no human has ever been to so why would it be on your guys's records like you know yeah think guys and of course, they use the same you know language and all that sort of stuff, right? Oh yeah, that star system. They call that star system the same name as we. So I do like this. This is good. You become need to become master chief. All good. Music spot on, right? They got the chance going on. Awesome. And I do like that he's now like trusting Cortana now. So them really kind of coming together as a as a unit. I don't know if it's completely earned at this point of the season, but it you know they had to they had to get here. So I feel like it would have been nice. 
because like Cartana's kind of been taking a back seat pretty much ever since McKee arrived in terms of John. Like we had that great moment where where Chief or John tried to lock Halsey in that contamination, you know, radiation room. Outside of that, we there hasn't been much development from you know, between John and Cortana. She helped him right away, right when she you know came to be. She helped him find his home planet, and she was kind of being his, right. But I'm his, just talking uh, about like sequentially, like she she kind of helps John, you know, and like, hey, Halsey issued this order, like beware. I love this smile by Kai right there. Yeah, little nod and smile. I'm just I'm just kind of agreeing with you in the sense that like his full trust in Cortana right now is a little quick, but I, I do think that there there at least was an effort there that so I can kind of buy it, but it could have been a little bit smoother, I suppose. This interaction's great. I love this. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Now they feel like a unit, right? Like, now they're kind of feeling like a little blue team action going on. They're kind of just giving the, like... Getting the band back together. All right, we're going to save the universe. Let's go. Although, everybody has their helmet off. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're in the ship. I think it's fine. I feel like Chief had a good balance of helmet on versus helmet off in this episode. Well, yeah. To, yeah, it goes to the... uh helmet on the entire second half here but and Halsey's just sprinting this for her life. This is great. Yeah, I thought like Halsey running through the freaking I know, I thought this was goofy. It's like what is she doing? But I like it. Like I think it's that's it's it's cool. But then now watching it after knowing what happens, like it's it kind of makes a little bit more sense and and fits it better, I think. Oh yeah, exactly. You can imagine her like putting her clothes on her clone and say, go run somewhere. <laughs> but like, there's a good, there's, there's a great first line. And she said anything yet, like not a word like, oh yeah. Cause she's like a clone. <laughs> but it totally got me. Yeah. Now here's something interesting. Now that I'm watching the episode again, this conflict hasn't been resolved. Keys ver uh, Jacob versus Miranda, like they don't have a moment together at the end of the season. That's that's a thread that's kind of left open for season two. Yep, for sure. So that'll be interesting to see how that gets addressed. You got to see the honor guard. That's rad. This little holy place. I don't know if I'm crazy about this set. No, the set's kind of bad. It's a little too basic, I think. I, I mean, I, I I feel like you needed, like, a wide shot to know that they're, like, on a mountain. Because, like, later on when all the elites arrive, Cortana's like, oh, all the elites were underneath the mountain. It's like, oh, they're on a mountain? <laughs> like, they literally, like, yeah. seem like they're, like, floating in, like, literally floating in space. Exactly. And, I mean, the, the, the physical architecture of it is cool. But because it's just literally green screen space behind them, like, it's just bad. <laughs> This is one of my canon issues, and I'll bring it up in the analysis episode, but why is Mercy the main guy? Um, is it because his name is Mercy, and that would be easier to digest as a viewer that isn't familiar with Halo? You saying that you would rather Truth be the uh, be the one? Well, Truth is the main guy, and the main line, Caitlin said, that, that felt like a change that wasn't necessary to me, but... I don't know. Maybe it was better for them to say mercy instead of truth. Like he gives mercy to her, this and that. Her facial expressions are good. I've gotten used to this version of Cortana. Like the first time we saw her face was like, oh, that's Cortana. Huh? I mean, I really like Cortana. Like I, I like this representation. Like I, I think it just fits. No, it's grown on me. I think it just like her hair bob, like I think bothered people right away because it was different than what you know what we see in the games. But uh, no, I do like this. Mm 
Why do they keep tossing grenades around? You know, <laughs> they do that. Yeah. Hey, toss me that grenade. All right. Hey, let's go play catch. Bring the grenades. So we're just getting some foreshadowing here. Yeah, I mean, that's an important moment there. He gets a little smirk. That's good. Does she have... Does old Cortana have that same feeling about humanity? I guess maybe she does. I feel like, like she does. Like reverence towards humanity? Yeah, I guess, you know, Halo 1 through 4, Cortana... Yeah, she's trying to protect me and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's pretty characteristic of her. This is another uh, kind of like queasy moment for me. Is like, now makes sense to put your goddamn helmets on. Like, <laughs> please. Again, I get why they didn't from a cinematic standpoint, but militarily, if you're having some issues, slap that sucker on there. Yeah, and I think, like, or I know Vanek starts sweating, but, like, does someone get, like, hit in the head and start bleeding? But, yeah, no, I, I, I see that argument. Well, say, say the ship does get ripped apart. Like, they can survive in, you know, space with their suits on. But this this is a cool moment, though. Um, overall, outside of the helmet thing that I'm bothered by. I like the, like, rippling, the, like, bubbling effect that they added to the to the frame here. And it's, everything's warping, like, physically. Yeah, I w I'll say it now, but I do wish that there was some sort of a contingency sent along with them, like a frigate or something sent along. Like, it makes sense that they are leading, I guess. But there should have been some UNSC presence on their tail to back them up a bit. Just like in general, or would you want to see like that presence like get destroyed by this slip space thing? Because I, I could see I could see two angles of it. You could have like a red shirt. Yeah. Like a red shirt ship that is it's only there just to show you the stakes and then gets destroyed. Exactly. It just seems weird that they would have sent four Spartans and that's it. Yeah. And I get that. Because, I mean, Parangoski was ready to send 10,000 troops. Yeah, exactly. Why not send 10,000 troops and four Spartans? <laughs> yeah, and you would think she still would have. She wouldn't have just taken John's word for it, right? It's like, oh, oh, John said it's okay. So I, I'll just, yeah, yeah, I'll trust you. Like, no, I'm, I'm still sending some people, even though they're going to die. It could have made the ending fight a little bit uh more interesting as well yeah you could have you could have had a little little space battle going on because like some of the some of the great moments from like the episode five fight reckoning was like how the spartans fought on the battlefield alongside the marines yep yeah i think the only time they touch on like the gung-ho marine that that vibe that you get from the games is when kai's lifting the, that shit was it the last episode where they're all like, yeah, let's go. We're with the Spartans. This is awesome. And I guess you get a couple times where they're like saying hi to Chief when he's walking around. Um, you get a little of that flavor, but you you don't really get that. Yeah, we're going to kill some cubbies together. Let's go. We're with the Spartans. <laughs> well, that's that's the uh, the aliens uh, marine vibe. You know, where we get Sergeant, Sergeant Johnson from. Yeah, maybe that'll come. I really like Miranda's. She did show a lot of growth to me mid season. I thought she was too meek still. Like she was still like she's this senior ish person in the military science division. She should have had a little more confidence. Um, and I think they, they showed her, you know, have that growth. They showed her in that state to, so she could have this conversation with her mom at the end. So I really like her growth. I'm excited for her. She's like introduced as when, when like, She's talking to Quan, 
and like she felt so defeated after that conversation and she just kind of like you know went to went to daddy jacob of to for like console to where like now she's like literally reading the charges to her mom and like have having like no remorse for it yeah she's like rubbing it in like here you go you're gonna die lady Miranda's had a very good arc, I think, over the over the season. I, I would agree with that. Whatever Article 72 is. <laughs> well, you don't remember from Episode 1? No, what was it? Is is the order to kill Quan. Oh, there you go. Okay, yep, I don't remember that. So again, full circle. Miranda seems to be... She may not be like okay with seventy two to like against Halsey right now, but like she's, you know, she was such an advocate against it in the early part of the season and even towards the middle. But she was so appalled by it. But now yeah. she's like, yeah, that's gonna happen. She gave it away here. I didn't know what she meant by that. Like, what are you talking about? Like ghost. I guess maybe it has m- many layers. I, uh, I'm I'm okay with the Miranda kind of mashup in this timeline. Now that she's had this character development, and I was ready for him to have a conversation too, but then he takes his little yeah. Thing I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that that thing was a thing. I'm okay with that because I feel like they could use that for some cool Oni stuff later on. But I think that's completely new. We haven't seen anything like that in mainline. Not that I recall, but I mean, there could be something that I just don't know. Should we call mainline the green timeline, by the way? Which timeline? The mainline, like the main Coraline. Yeah, that's the green timeline, I guess, right? Yeah. Core cannon just not, not good enough for you? I don't know. I mean, we're going with color theme. Like they're they're floaty chairs. Too bad Chief didn't jump on the chairs and like they start punching one of them. <laughs> that would have been rad. So they are just using her. They don't. What they're saying is that after the Halo fire fires, she's just gonna burn with them. So they just don't really. They've been using her the whole time. More good chatter here. Really good chatter. Like this is like this is the the Spartan shit that I've been wanting the entire season. I feel like Halo fans would have been much happier this season if like every episode started with this chatter and then going into battle. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that can be a learning for season two. But yeah, and they showed this at the very beginning, right? This is one of the trailer teasers. Honestly, dude, like when I watched one of the teasers and saw like this moment, I was like, hell yeah. Like I was so ready for it. And like watching it now, like I still got like excited and I was happy that like it was here and stuff. But like afternoon. Yeah. Buckle up, baby. It gets intense from here on out. (laughs) Her sniper looks a little small. I don't know, dude. It's like fucking six feet long. Like, I know she's just huge. I like the methane, methane tank removal. That was a good touch. All good. Come to daddy. Beautiful. So now they're really looking like a squad, right? Yeah. So you got Kai in back sniping. But again, like looking at this set, like the temple's great, but it, it's like. I feel like it would have been just better if it was like a landscape. Like it was just like it was just a desert planet or something and not just like the sky because it just makes it seem that they're just floating somewhere. <clears throat> and this it, it makes it look more like a set than an actual environment. Oh, this was good. I didn't see many people say like I called it. So I think this got a lot of people. 
Yeah. I, I haven't really looked at the, the, the responses, but but yeah, like I I was like, oh shit. I know last episode uh Josh had, you know, his opinions about Halsey, but like I I do kinda like what they've done. I disagree with his opinion. Yeah, I think she's got a lot of depth. I enjoy the changes that they've made. And I think this episode as well just like makes me more intrigued with her with like what she's doing and where she's she's going. And it almost puts me to the point where I kind of wish she got a little bit of what she wanted this episode or last episode just to see her, you know, go through it all. Did you notice that the, the uh, prophets had different colors? There's a blue, there's a green, there's a red. Those little jewel thingies in the background. But I think they always have had different colors. Okay, so they carried that through. Yeah, I think they did. The honor guard armor looks a little too clean to me. But overall, I'm, I'm good with it. Just the one grunt. So I'm the only curious thing that I have kind of thinking about this episode is that like McKee and John. There they go. They're going to float up above, which I didn't catch the first time. People have issues with that. With what? Oh, how they just float straight up. They're just floating up above and looking down. Go on. I was going to say like John and McKee like definitely have like a shared a shared reaction and response to the artifacts like connecting and like doing their thing and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like it, are they only doing that or sorry, are they the only ones affected by that because of like their proximity? Cause like you, you got to think that there are more than just them too. All right. Now where did those guys come from? Oh, they've just been up there the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Like you, <laughs> That was another thing. Like, where, where the where the hell did those guys come from? <laughs> and again, you had that shot of all the elites running up to like establish that it was a mountain, but like you didn't. There's no drop pods. These guys are just falling out of the sky. Yeah. So like, it's it's. Uh... That's another plot convenience that I just kind of was like, Ugh. like again, the action's good, all that sort of stuff. Is just like, uh. Yeah, they could have done better with this set. This brute fight is good. This brute fight is amazing. And I like how it transitions into first person. Yeah, it's enough. When I was watching with my dad, he's like, so this is what the game's like? And I'm like, well, kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> like you never actually have a fight like this in the game, but you do see through the chief's eyes. Yeah. But yeah, it's... High high intensity and great great effects here, great visuals. I think it's coming up. If you're watching with subtitles, the chieftain here is subtitled as Atriox. He is okay. That's confirmed, huh? Which, I mean, it's it's never been confirmed like on screen to my knowledge, because like even even while I was looking at the HUD a moment ago. It doesn't show. It's the Atriox growls that just came up right there. The uh, chief's HUD just identifies him as just like a brute, not as like Atriox. Right. Yep. Ooh, there they go. They just fly away. Yeah, like <laughs> so convenient. Right. Another plot convenience. Like, oh, we're just gonna thin everybody out for you. I think it's interesting. And kind of smart that they did that because now they have that door to either eventually go through or, you know, whatever to like have Atriox become like a character and then you develop the banished and then all that kind of stuff. Now, is that all the stuff they do in season two? I hope not. But like, is that something they do in like season four or something? Like that's definitely like a possibility. So they're kind of like that the showrunners and, and Kiki and whomever are trying to future-proof themselves, kind of keep these little nuggets 
and uh, you know, do with it with you know what they will. Although he does seem to get cut down by the condor or whatever it is, but we'll see. So I, I the other thing I have an issue with again, this is kind of a main line green timeline um, difference or or I guess element that they added is the cracked visor. The cracked visor was a big thing in Halo Five, but I don't feel like it's really iconic enough to really make a point to make to include the cracked visor. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a, a nice little tidbit. It's a it's a carry through. It's a carryover. Yeah. I mean, he could just as easily get a new helmet in the beginning of season two. But they made a point to crack his visor. I do like the view of the halo here, though. I, we never get a wide shot of the halo, like seeing the thing. I'm sure they would reveal that next season. Well, we ha- we actually we haven't really seen the ring. Like we we've only seen it in this like ethereal vision. Exactly. There's the ring in the background. There, we saw it there, but never like the real ring, right? Yeah, we still get like the fantasy like view of it. Bank just gets. What hit him? What? Well, I couldn't tell what hit him. It looked like a fuel rod cannon. Okay. It could have just been a green energy bolt, which doesn't make that type of explosion, but. So, again, I think this is just a convenience thing where she flops again, right? Like, so at the end of the last episode, she's like, I'm done with you. And then now. She hasn't. She doesn't know that the prophets are going to betray her, but they've talked about it, and now she's like, "Oh yeah, maybe I do like you." Well, I think you know, she touches the artifact because she sees John's in distress. I think she still has that connection. She's just like, my time with you on Reach was you know it meant i felt something there and i guess she just wants to keep that and that just might be her her angle of it but yeah i agree like i i mean i said a lot about this last episode like i think mckee should have should have had like a little bit of more like alliance I mean, I'm generally okay with her character. A lot of people didn't don't like it, but I'm generally like I understand why she exists. No, I get, I understand why she exists as well. I just, I just wish her character was a little bit truer to what her character established. It gets established as she didn't need to be as overly three dimensional as they were trying to make her, which I think makes her a little bit less three dimensional. I think you can still you can still have a three dimensional character that doesn't like change sides, you know. The other thing with if that is Atrex, they didn't give him the chain breaker, but I guess he doesn't get the chain breaker until he's part of the banished. So yeah, I think that's what it is. All right, this is an interesting decision here. So he can't he he can't bring the artifact because if he touches it, he goes into that state. Yeah. He can't be himself. Someone else needs to get the artifact. He could save Silver Team. I feel like I don't. I don't know. Like, why? Why not just like have Cortana just like talk him through the shit like in the games? Like, why does Cortana have to take over his body? Again, they haven't really trained together like they did in the Green timeline, so. But like their fir- literally their first like interaction with each other, Ackerson like shoots a giant, practically a nuke at Chief in the hangar, and Chief like survives it because Chief's amazing. Like, I I I feel like they could have still had like the the odds are against this or whatever. Because she talked him through it in last episode, you know? She's like, this, do this, 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 this. And then she controlled the, the warthog. Yeah, I feel like you could still do that. She obviously she she doesn't need to control Chief in order to control the Condor, which was a great move for them to do. I don't know. I, I get... I guess I get what they're trying to do. 
like as a TV show, but just I just don't think it's necessary. I just I feel like you just you just have Chief be the hero, and 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 then th- this is the moment you have the two of them one hundred percent in sync with each other, instead of right now Chief just trusts her to control his body, whereas they should now trust each other that there are two of them in in here now type of a thing. And I feel like the chess quote wasn't necessary either. What was the chess quote? The ch- like when the game is over, the pon- the king and the pawn. Oh, the chess. Box. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that wasn't necessary. I mean, it's tying her beginning scene together. Yeah, I feel like it's it's now. Well, that's what she first said when she was born in both the games and in, in the show. So I I kind of got the sense that she's almost like reborn in a way. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, I didn't put that together. But again, I don't really know. Okay, so there's Atriox, right? Yeah, this is him. So is he dead now? I don't know what is, what's about to happen. Oh. The condor just came in and t- took him out. He'll survive somehow. I guess this is more just like an escape. But again, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who makes the subtitles, so you know, it could just be a fluke or whatever. But like, so now he can touch it because he's not right. Yeah, because he's yeah. But again, like, you could just have Chief being badass Chief, and he could just carry Riz or someone, and you could have you could have Vanek or someone carry it. Like, like they're Spartans; they can endure pain. They could have done it differently. I, I I don't I don't know I we'll have to just see what happens in season two. But like I really just I really think my only gripe this episode is just that Cortana takes over his body because even though we get the silent chief and like he kind of you know is the chief that we know him as and he like saves Riz here and like burns her chest and all that kind of stuff. But like okay, but in the back of my mind, the justification for all this is because Cortana is controlling him. Not because that's who Chief is. It ties into the decision that they made early is to drill him, drill her directly into his brain versus use the chip. I think that was part of it. And then yeah, he just he just goes into action. They could have used biofoam perhaps here. Why didn't they? I use I don't I don't know why they. Yeah, do they not have biofoam here? I had the same <laughs> thought. I was like, oh, he's gonna pull out some biofoam, but no. Yeah, that's perfect. Like they have a bi- they have biofoam <laughs> in the green timeline. I'm gonna patent that. By the way, come on, it's gonna catch on. Green timeline. Just keep just keep saying it. Hmm. That's fucking brutal. Because, yeah, like, although he cauterized it, like, well, I guess Vanek's about to do some fancy shit with his future spray thing. <laughs> right. It's like, when, it's, like, it's like in Star Trek when they just pull out some random thing and it's just like, beep, 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 beep. And you're just like, okay. It's... You don't have cancer anymore. Well, yeah, I'm curing <laughs> cancer right now. <laughs> So did you see that sign? Like she's in some sort of like zoo and there was a like where it says age of the dinosaurs on there. I I, uh, I was thinking of uh, I was thinking of Tom in that moment. <laughs> but yeah, she seems to be in some sort of aquarium. Writing in her journal. I like the journal tie in, though. That's very good. And then, like, what is she? Where is she? She's still in reach, but like, what is she gonna do? Well, she's she's leaving. Oh, that's that's what this whole conversation was like. We we're gonna go to the tether, and you'll be able to leave. And so that's literally her leaving the planet. So we'll see where she goes in season two. I mean, she is a bit of an outlaw in the mainline canon too. Green timeline, to a degree, right? Like, especially like in Halo Four and Halo Five. She's like brought into custody and she escapes with Jewel and all that other stuff. So 
She's kind of that. Yeah. I almost thought that guy was Aiden, too, by the way. Did he have a clone, too? <laughs> I forget where I said this, but I was like, I was talking to someone, and I was like, the Spartans should just always have dirty armor. Like, it just looks so much, so much cooler. Good job, costumes. Yeah. Yeah, overall, like, set stuff, like, I was happy with all the all the Halo elements. I thought it was very good. And if you haven't watched uh, Halo Cannon's breakdowns of all the stuff, it's definitely go watch that. He ties everything together really nice. I haven't watched the last few episodes that he's done, but I watched a few of them. I try to watch them after we record. Yeah. Cuz I don't want to I don't want it to influence what I what I say, but yeah, he's I mean, he's always on his game. Ian's an amazing amazing guy. The Halo community. And there we go. Oh boy. Here we go. On to season 2. So what do you think? Do you think season two will come out next year, or is that too soon? They're already they're 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 gonna they're gonna film it this summer apparently. Like it's new showrunner. Um, there was an interview with Kiki, and I think Pablo was saying, "Yeah, we're ready to shoot this summer." And then Kiki was like, "Ah, man, we'll do our best to shoot this summer." <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, we'll we'll see. It would be nice, you know, if we didn't have to wait a full year, you know, or, or maybe only have to wait a full year. Oh, at the, it's not coming. I mean, it at the, at the earliest, it's coming out next March, like at the earliest. There's no way it's coming out sooner than March. Yeah, I wouldn't expect that. I think it would be beneficial for them to keep the March because like, now that this ended, we have, we're like, we're less than a month away from like the summer events gaming events um like season and then in the fall is when all the big games come out and if halo's gonna halo infinite's gonna be having dlcs and expansions and like all this kind of stuff tacked onto it personally i feel like you have your games in the fall and then your tv show in the spring if they're able to keep it to the march that would be great since it is a sci-fi and visual effects heavy show, there could be a world where they would need the additional time to to kind of do post work and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, like seasons of shows, typically, like the the majority of shows that have that kind of cadence, they're they're doing a new show, a new season every every year. It's it's whether it's like a a show that's having difficulty getting signed on for new seasons through that that delay. Or shows like Game of Thrones, uh, where they have just so much time to like make make the show as good as it can be. But like the goal is to always make a season a full year. I mean, I would love that if we had a new one of these seasons every March and some new Halo content game wise, you know, in the fall, and then we get a book every once in a while. Like we're we're Halo full for a bit. I think I think that's a good schedule. So you know, whoever's whoever's listening you know make it happen but i mean development on tv shows and movies are always crazy and you know halo's already had a super rocky start they did this in the pandemic you know so kudos to the team you know i, lo I love that they you know they, everybody worked very hard on this and i i appreciate that as a halo fan people put their blood sweat and tears into this stu stuff so differences aside mainly with the writing you know like how they presented certain things, but like set wise, costume wise, little Lord Lord Nugget wise, I thought the acting was solid throughout. You know, it started started a little rocky, but I think towards the end they they got on their feet, their their footing. Happy overall with with the production value. All right, well let's go ahead and end it here. Uh, if you're interested, Paramount Plus produces a Halo after show segment called Halo: The Series Declassified that releases with each TV episode. This week for Transcendence, Sidney Goodman interviews executive producer Kiki Wolfkill and Stephen Kane. 
They discuss their accomplishments, producing the show, developing character relationships, the scope of the action sequences, and more. And the after show also highlights the cast and crew's reflections from the first season. And you can check it out now on Paramount Plus or on YouTube in select uh, territories. It's a great interview. If nothing else, just go and watch the interviews with the cast and that this final interview with Kiki and Steven. They're all good. Very good. I mean, I, I really enjoyed that after the show bit. So shout out to whoever produced that and Sydney. Like it, it was it was a pleasant surprise I wasn't expecting, and it's great to just get those those insights and just and like I work in movies and TV, and so like just kind of seeing the behind the scenes, just I don't know, gives me just like a connection to the show where it's just like, oh yeah, it's just a TV show, like <laughs> that's all it is. Like they're doing all the same stuff that like I do, so it's uh it's it's really cool. I love that they chose Sydney uh, because she's a gamer and she knows Halo. So she kind of has that the background knowledge of the, you know, the green timeline. I'm going to say it one more time. And, you know, then, and then the perspective of of, you know, the the television stuff. So she asked a really a bunch of smart questions, which is great. Yeah. Kudos, kudos to her. What else? I think that's it. Yeah. Colin, thank you for joining me. Yeah, this was fun. Can't wait to do some analysis. Let's get into it. Only only a moment for you, but a couple of days for the listeners. <laughs> That's right. But um, but thank you. Thank you for joining us for another week of Halo TV+. Plus. Halo, the series, has now fully premiered and is all available exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, we will not be getting new episodes on Thursday nights. And like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode to all of our shows that Evolved produces at EvolvedHalo.com. It also features links to our Discord server, Patreon page, Xbox Live Club, and other contact information. Once again, another special shout out to all of our patrons for supporting Evolved and making all of our shows possible. Head over to patreon.com slash Halo Evolved to learn more. And finally, if you want to leave us an email or a voicemail about this week's Halo the Series episode, you can leave us an email at podcastevolved at gmail.com or you can give us a call at 205-EVOLVED, which is 205-386-5833. And if you want to listen to more of Colin, you can check out Mission Debrief and Builds with Blocks. And with that, I've been your host, Orin, and until next time, we've evolved. Evolved. <laughs>